it's Meg McCarthy from Cherry Picks. Hi, Camila. How are you? Good. How are you? I love Cherry Picks. You do? Yeah, oh, I so always see your posts on social media. Oh my gosh. Oh, that makes that means the world to us. Thank you for for, you know, watching. Thank you. Thank you for your support. <laughs> um, of course. I was just telling your brilliant director that this this film really um, fulfilled all my rom-com needs, but also addressed so many of my wants for the genre, um, bringing such a refreshing and feminist perspective. Um, and so thank you so much. And your performance is stunning in it. So congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm happy you liked it. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, Anna's experience is so universal. Um, I mean, there's still so many societal pressures put on women in the workplace, especially for young professionals. Um, as someone who's navigated, you know, professional spaces, can you talk to me about what it meant to step into her shoes and to kind of bring those work dynamics to life? Oh, it was great. I mean, I relate to Anna in so many ways, um, especially when it comes to her relationship to her goals and her dreams. Um, I feel like I, I mean, it was already on the page, her drive and her ambition was already on the page, but that's definitely, when I read the script, the thing that I clinged to and that the, my way into her was like, I know what that's like. I know what it's like to, you know, be so desperate to succeed in the field that you're trying to succeed in. Um, so yeah, I, I related to her a lot in that way. Yeah. I mean, you played her, it was, it felt so the testament to your beautiful performance. It felt so effortless. Like she was just doing it. She was just doing yeah. what she needed to do. Um, she's never victimized. Like you're, you know, you know, she's exhausted, but she just keeps on keeping on. Yeah. Um, and it was, like I said, really refreshing and so relatable, um, there's so many love stories in this film. Uh, I think that really uh, the love she has for art and for her career mm -hmm. is also super, super central. Talk to me about the fact that, you know, the conflict here is not about, even though she, there's this big white lie going on, the conflict is not about her having to choose work over romantic love or vice right. versa. What did that mean to you? I mean, I think... Ultimately, Anna's biggest struggle was with herself and feeling like, you know, clearly at the end, at that scene with um, Will on the soccer field, you know, it's like she reveals that her, you know, her big insecurity is that she feels like she's not good enough, that, that she's, she's almost like embarrassed by the fact that she's not successful. Um, but, you know, and she, she admits that, you know, if it wasn't for me making this white lie, you may have not even given me the time of day. So in a way, her faking it till she made it really worked out in her favor. And I think that's like a big statement on like manifestation and kind of, you know, um, not to sound cliche, but like you can actually make your dreams happen if you just operate through life like they've already happened. And, right. You know? So true. I mean, it's like, we always talk about imposter syndrome, but it's like, isn't that what we're all kind of having to do anyways? Yeah. Like, just be right. like, uh, I think that's what was so cool here. I was like, um, I was never really waiting for the other shoe to drop because I kind of had this feeling that this white lie was kind of giving her that extra confidence that she needed because that's what right. society, unfortunately, the patriarchy, all of it has like yeah. demanded of us. Yeah. And, and the truth is like, you know, with imposter syndrome, it sometimes never really goes away. You know, like it's like even when you finally attain the goals that you've always wanted to attain, then you just have new goals and then you feel like you're an impo you know, it's like it, it you're always going to feel that to some extent. Um and I think that's like a nice reminder, you know, it's like every time you hear about the people actors I look up to talk about having imposter syndrome and I'm like, "How could you have imposter syndrome? You're so and so," you know? Um so I think it's like a nice reminder to anyone, you know, that like even the most successful people feel that feeling. Um, so it's not, you can't give too much attention to it. Absolutely. It's what makes us human. Yeah. And I feel like if we didn't have a little bit of that imposter syndrome, like it'd be like, oh, maybe check your ego a little yeah, bit. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like, it means that we're keep reaching. We keep exactly. wanting 
you and know, we're, more we're continuously ourselves. working on ourselves. Absolutely. Cause it never ends, right? The yeah. growth never ends. No, um, it does not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to talk about the wonderful chemistry between you and Marissa and Lena. I mean, talk to me about finding the beautiful dream. There. Oh my gosh. I mean, but also the, the weight of these relationships, I yeah. was so pleasantly surprised by how equally important those dynamics were to Anna's journey. I'm really happy you brought that up because I feel like that's a huge part of the film that doesn't get um, talked about enough, which is that like her relationship with Archie's mom, with Catherine, is such a strong relationship. Like, like they really bond right up from the beginning. And, you know, we can't underestimate the power between um, your relationship to your boyfriend's mom. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a very powerful relationship. And there's like a, you know, a kinship there, you know, like a, it's like a woman to woman, like a young woman to an older woman connection that I think is very maternal and nurturing. And, um, you know, I feel like the one that she has with, with Catherine, the relationship she has with Catherine is very maternal and nurturing and sweet. And the one she has with Marissa is like really, you know, she's like, like Marissa's like tough on her, but only for Anna to be the best that she can be. Exactly. For the right reasons. Yeah. Um, I love that you brought that up because I always joke with my husband or with his family that like, I fell in love with you know, his mom and dad first, because <laughs> they, like, I, I, I went over, I moved to LA and like, I went over to their house. It's a long story, but I went over to their house for dinner and like, they had this lovely wine and they made this beautiful meal. And I felt so at home and I had just yeah. moved to the East coast and I felt so kind of isolated and like, what the hell did I just do? No, and the, so true. yeah, it, no, it's so true. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, like, oh, she's going to have, like, the best mom-in-law. Like, it's so lovely. Oh, my God. The exact mom-in-laws are so important. I met <sighs> my boyfriend's mom on Musica, which, you know, comes out mm. in April. And, you know, she's in the movie as well. And, you know, she's th that was her first time acting. Um, oh, so I got to know her while I was also getting to know him. So <laughs> I was, like, creating relationships with both of them, just like Anna and Upgraded, you know? Right. So, no, um, no th that, that plays a huge role, I think. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. Again, it's like, I mean, I think not to make it a gender thing, but I think because we, this is make through, it a gender thing. Yeah. Let's okay, go. I will, I will, I will. I'm going to, because it's through the female lens. It's like, we yeah. pick up all these beautiful nuances that we watch as women and we go exactly. Totally. Like, that is so important. That is integral to like falling in love and yes. Um, and I loved it. And so it felt like, yeah, it felt like her and Anna and William had this kind of innate connection because like mm -hmm. Anna already could feel so safe in his family and like, um, and also this, the artist, like she's an actress. It was just a yeah. lovely, also such a beautiful love story about art. Yeah. And the way that you, you as Anna talks about art, it really like, I think it rejuvenates, it rejuvenated me as like a creative. It's mm. like you, um, it's really beautiful. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm so happy you're picking up on all, on all the right things. Oh my gosh, of course. Um, <laughs> well, let's talk about that for a second because I'd love to know, and I know this might be a tricky question, a loaded one, but I'm curious, when and how did you first fall in love with art in any medium or like have that moment where you're like, oh my gosh, the empathy that it can I... create? for that? I mean, no, I, I, I love that you asked that question. Um, I mean, I've always loved art peripherally um, hmm. and I've had an appreciation for it to some extent, but it wasn't until I actually started acquiring art, um, hmm. like to decorate my home, that I really started to look deeper into it um, and started to create a more personal relationship. Because I think what you, the art that you decide to put in your home has to be personal for you to want to wake up every morning and walk past it, you know? Um, and there's so many pieces that like, just as soon as I would look at it, I would connect to, and I don't really know why, um, right. but it, it would have some sort of familiar element 
or inspiring element or something that just made me gravitate toward it. Um, I remember there was there's one piece in my home that re reminded me of a moment I had with a loved one where it was like, you know, it's I think it's called Two Heads. And it's just mm -hmm. like, you know, one's like pink and green and they're just kind of like leaning on each other like this, but it's very abstract. But it just mm -hmm. reminded me because one of them had black hair when my hair is black. And it reminded me of like, this moment that I had shared with a loved one where we were both kind of like this with each other. And I was like, I need that painting in my home. Like it, you know, it, it gave me that sense of like love and comfort. Um, and so I think art can be so powerful in that way where, you know, some, some art might not resonate with one person, but it'll resonate with someone else very deeply. Um, so I, I love how personal it is. Absolutely. I love that. I yeah. love that story. Um, it's so true. And I feel like that's how folks are going to feel watching this movie as well. I think it's like, sounds cheesy, but it's like, all we want to do is feel seen, whether it's through a painting or whether yeah. it's through a film or reading a great book. Totally. Um, and I think the art we consume informs us a lot about ourselves. And you learn about yourself through that process. Like I learned about myself through putting art in my home. I was like, I, I, I developed my taste for it in that process. And now every mm -hmm. time I go home, I'm like, this is so me. I don't know what that means, but I, I just feel like I'm in this like shell of me. <laughs> and I feel, yeah. so, I feel so safe there because of the art that's, and, and the furniture and whatever that's creating that environment um, that is a, an accumulation of things that resonate with me, you know? It's so true. I feel like so often we're told what to like, mm -hmm. what we need to have yeah. around us, put on us or whatever. But then, and then when we do that, we buy something because we think we need to buy it because of whatever reason that's not authentic to us. It's like mm -hmm. you have a little like icky feeling inside and then you don't feel safe. You don't feel at home. But then when you really consume and put things in your home and, you know, whatever, if you're wearing it, watching yeah. it, consuming it, that is truly just makes you feel good. Exactly. It's all connected. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's, it's so funny because that, that reminds me a lot of Anna. I feel like she really is someone who is on this path of like, this is what I love and um, I'm going to kind of consume myself with it, but in the best way. Yeah. And it really, like I said, it rejuvenated me um, and it reminded me of why, why we love all of this, why yeah. we love all of this when, when it totally. feels hard. Yeah. Um, and that was beautiful. Um, before I let you go, this has been so lovely, by the way. Thank you for your time. Oh my God, of course. Um, William and Anna watched Charade on the Plane. One of my favorite films. I love that. <laughs> um, What's the best last movie you watched on a flight? The best last movie. Well, like the last movie you watched on a flight that you loved. Um, uh, oof. I have a terrible memory when it comes to these things. <laughs> um, hang on. <laughs> Wait, this is funny. Okay. Um, I watched The Hunger Games for the first time ever on a plane like a few weeks ago. I had never seen it before. But I saw that the new one come came out and I really wanted to watch it. But I was like, I feel like I should watch like the OG Hunger Games before I get there. Yeah. Yeah. So me and my boyfriend watched it together on the plane. And we did exactly what Anna and Will did. We like played it at the same exact time. Um, and I was like, this movie is really good. <laughs> I was, like, really I was good. like, I'm so late to the party. But I'm like, it, it was so much better than I had anticipated. Um, it's a wonderful film. It is wonderful. Yeah. Better we than ever, I say. Jennifer Lawrence is just amazing. Oh. She's so great. She is. She yeah. truly is. So are you. You're so wonderful in this. And, Thank you. Uh, and I just can't wait to see everything else you got coming up. But um, thank you again for your time today. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this interview. Hello, this, this is Meg McCarthy, McCarthy from Cherry Picks. Hi, Carlson. How are you? See you. Gosh, it's so lovely to see you. How are you? Um, I'm so good. I love this film so much. Congratulations. Um, and I loved your little cameo on the subway. Bedraggled girl. Yeah, that was me. 
I was like, who is she? Like, what's her story? <laughs> Pause, Zoom. <laughs> Actually, like a little prequel. I see it. I see it happening. <laughs> um, I mean, this movie really, it truly fulfilled all of my rom-com needs, but also addressed so many of my wants for the genre. Um, when you signed up to direct this film, which tropes were you looking forward to breaking and putting a fresh and feminist perspective on? I mean, you know, it was uh, creatively, like it was a hard left turn for me. I read the script and I found myself being very drawn to Anna and her character and just fighting tooth and nail for her voice in these really impossible sets of circumstances that are just kind of stacked against her. And she doesn't have, you know, she's, she's literally taking a hatchet and just like breaking these walls, these glass ceilings that are all around her. And I really related to that. And, um, you know, I thought that the chemistry of the the romantic comedy aspect of it was just kind of so strong and baked in and really charming. But to me, the story was so clearly about the three women. And um, that was the beating heart of of the script. That was my entry point into the material. And so I wanted to work to, yes, like have that living, breathing, fun romance between Anna and Will, but like underneath it, there's this current of women supporting women in the workplace, but I didn't want to do it in this like overt kind of like in your face, annoying way. I wanted to make it subtle. And, um, and, and that was my like sort of mission going into it. Oh my gosh. I mean, that was beautifully said. And I, I could feel all of that like radiate from the screen and it made me so happy. There's, that it this film is so universal and relatable because there's so many loves of her lives happening at the same time. She's meeting this wonderful man. She's also falling in love with her work ethic, with her career, and with these women. I mean, talk to me about you know working with Marissa and Lena, legends, and and finding that. Oh, um, <laughs> I mean, finding the timing and the pacing um, to make them sort of not stereotypical, because it could have gone in that way. But instead, there are these fabulous, complex women. Um, talk to me about that that dynamic between the three of them. I mean, they all just play these different roles in in Anna's life. And there's like this like trinity between all of them and this kind of like invisible thread. You have like the sort of classic fairy godmother in Catherine. And then you have and then you have like this mother figure in Claire that you just want to please so badly. And in the workplace, it's about respect, right? And so like how, you know, Anna sort of um is so innately intelligent and passionate about what she does and detail oriented. And that's what gets Claire's attention. That's what, that's what separates her from, you know, from like the other little assistants and um, is, is her attention to detail and her passion for, for art. And she's in it for the right reasons. And I, 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 res I responded to that and I, and I felt like, the way that Marissa, you know, as an actor brought this sort of like quirk and unique kind of quirky art woman to the table, she really wanted to like separate herself from like the Devil Wears Prada vibe. Um, and I think she did a really good job of that. She was very clever and very specific with her choices. And um, I just, yeah, you could really like, I could really like feel it coming through in the edit of what we were trying to do and I loved that I loved that like Marissa's character operates on respect and mm -hmm. she had to come up in what I imagine would be an incredibly male-dominated uh tough place um and she worked her way to the top and so she's looking back and helping Anna but she is merit-based and so Anna has to you know really fight for that respect and I think by the end of the movie she has it absolutely absolutely oh my god yeah and her accent it's like such a choice oh, I loved it so such a choice such a vibe I mean she was making me just like 
burst out laughing on set and this is great. Yeah, it was so funny. I was watching this. Um, I cast it on my TV, which I love, you know, to do that when I got the screening link. And I was actually next to my husband and he was loving this movie also, which is Good. a testament <laughs> um, uh, as well. But he's like, is that Marissa Tomei? Like we're both like dying because it's such um it was such a beautiful, funny choice. Um yeah, I mean, talk to me also about working with Camilla to find kind of Anna's passion and and also her you you mentioned it earlier her drive because she never she's never the victim I mean that's what I loved so much I mean she's getting thrown everything but her again it's this pacing that was really well crafted um in this film that gave it so much life and relatability and you were you were rooting for her and you could feel that passion come through um even when she was exhausted she never she never lost that love yeah. Um, for what she was doing. And yeah, talk to me about working with, with her to sort of find that. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, Camila is an incredibly intuitive and um, she's a tremendous talent, but she has great instincts. Mm -hmm. And so building out the character with her, like I just trusted her um, implicitly. And so that was easy, an easy collaboration there. And then I think just, you know, because her character's love is so pure with, for, for the art world, all of the other things, like, like it's easy to kind of build from there when the love that you have for, for something is so pure. And also when you're dealing with art, uh, it's, it's just, it's ancient. It like stands the test of time and you have some pretty incredible um, guides, if you will, like in that space. And so I think that like those guides come through for her, you know, in the forms of Claire and Catherine and even, even Will. Um, I think that that's like a deeper like undercurrent to, to the story that was really cool to, to craft. Yeah, absolutely. It must have felt extra special as an artist yourself to sort of pay homage to that love. And mm -hmm. also this, this idea that we don't have to, like, there was never the conflict in this film is not her needing to choose love over work. Right, right. Ugh. I mean, yeah, totally. And, and also that she, she doesn't, um, she doesn't ever try to make herself small for the mm -hmm. love. You know, she doesn't, she she actually makes herself as big as possible mm -hmm. and and i think will has like an adjustment process with that you know but by but by the end you know like you have like this beautiful like oh i don't want to give it away of course but <laughs> but um, it is a rom-com okay so i don't think i'm giving it away that much but um, <laughs> yeah you know i think like she she really like finds herself and you attract the level of energy like the health that you are and she's like in this really healthy place at the end but you know as high up as you can go and as big as you can like make yourself as a woman still love is so like important to the heart and so important to the soul whether that is friendship love whether that's family love or whether, whether that's romantic love and so I think that's called into her life back at the end and that was beautiful absolutely yeah, it's a really lovely reminder of of um of the importance of it sounds so silly and cheesy, but like it's so true, the importance of love and in our everyday lives and how it really drives us and um and that all has to sort of go together in a way that that like creates that happiness. She, you know, all of these the love for these women in her life, the love for her work, the love for this man, it all kind of works together. Um, and it was really lovely and so relatable. And um, yeah, it was beautiful. Um, I want to talk about hard left turn, but I want to talk about um, we're on the plane. We're watching Charade, which is one of my favorite films of all time. Was that a you choice? Was that in the script? Like, um, it's, it kind of was one of those details that came in to the picture and post, you know, when you're like deciding what to put on the screen. Um, it was just like such a no brainer. So we were just like, put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> definitely a charade moment. Yes. <laughs> so yes. fitting. It was perfect. Yes. Um, 
what are some of your go-to travel movies like you know and what's and then what's the best what's the best last movie you watched on a flight hmm. wow that's a really good question um my go-to plane movie I like I sort of just like turning on like you know they have the tv option right I just turn on 30 rock Mm -hmm. comforting that's just my that's my comfort mm -hmm. I prefer to just just like have my comfort have my medicine on the plane either yes. that or like lord of the rings or like fellowship Ooh. okay yeah I like that. And the best um plane movie that I watched um gosh it's just been I I, I do have a, a memory of <laughs> don't kill me Danny Villeneuve but I did watch Dune on the plane which is sacrilege I did watch it again in a theater so like don't yeah don't don't, don't kill me that, but yeah it's enjoyable you know what though I don't know I was think as I was kind of forming this question I was thinking because like the last I think I the last movie I truly like loved and was sobbing on a plane was um the farewell oh, um good point. and I it's great that I was on a plane that 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 like rocked me to my core. I was like just convulsing, sobbing. Was a ghost story. Oh, that's such a good movie. Yeah. Um, but it's true. I think that like it's just a testament. If it's good, it's good. If it's good, it'll be good anywhere. It'll be good on a small screen on a plane. It'll be good in a huge theater, IMAX. I mean, um, if you can kind of zero in and get so connected to a to a film and to the characters on this like tiny screen with the turbulence, I mean that to me is a you Real know statement. Yeah. Um, all right, but last but not least, in honor of loving art and loving it all, um when and how did you first fall in love with art in any medium? What a great question. I really think that I fell in love with art. Hmm. This might be a half-baked thought, so forgive me, but <laughs> I think I fell in love with art when I was, I think, like five or six years old, and I watched A Little Princess. For the oh, oh, you're killing me. It, yes. Um, I mean, it's such a cinematic and stunning film but I remember that it, oh it just got me in my heart and I was five you know like I I remember going up to my room and like closing the door and like having like a really quiet moment and like sitting on the hardwood floor and like getting a piece of crayon and like drawing on the floor like she does in the movie and like being like papa papa I'm, like try, <laughs> trying to like play the role and I you know, rewatching that film as an adult, I, it is art. That's that, that movie is art. And, um, I, I have to say that that was a moment that that came into my life where it was just like extremely profound. Right. Did you rewatch it for the blazing world? I feel like there's some similarities. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I watched it for blazing world. And I also, I, 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 I have to say, I rewatch it before everything I do. Right. I do it's just like oh gosh I could cry thinking about it it's so, so good. good it's also like and I think that it the, kind of to bring it back to this film not underestimating the audience I mean that it's a very adult film in the sense of um cinematically and but you feel it as as a young girl you feel it in your heart in your soul in your bones um, and I think this movie kind of, you know, like jumping again, but like truly, I feel like you're not catering to an audience here. You're really just presenting kind of a slice of life in a hilarious and fun and heartfelt way, but it truly feels very grounded and you're not underestimating your audience. And I think, again, you're just such a brilliant filmmaker, Carlson, and a lovely human. And this was so wonderful. Appreciate it. I really hope to talk to you again soon.